after all in the room. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Ali. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, please wait for a minute. Yes, yes. Can we, can you, Karuna, sorry. Karuna, can you uh, please start? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Dr. Karuna Zadhav from Naval Wadi Institute of Management Studies and Research, Pune, Maharashtra. I welcome you all in today's third session of a day two of Adal FDP on structural modeling and artificial neural network in management research. Today's third session is on mediation and moderation and interaction effects. And our guest speaker for this session is Dr. Muhammad Adi. I'm very happy to introduce him as Dr. Muhammad Adi work as an assistant professor in the Department of Management Studies, NIT, Hamirpur, Himachal Pradesh. After doing his MBA, he earned his PhD from Aligarh Muslim University. He was the recipient of prestigious fellowship, JRF and SRF from UGC India. His teaching and research interests broadly lie in the areas of marketing management and the consumer behavior with special emphasis on consumer perception, ethical consumption, service quality, and self-service technology. His present research focuses on diffusion and adoption of emerging technology, sustainable marketing, tourism, and hospitality. Dr. Adil has, to his credit, several publications in very reputed journals like SCI, SSCI, and A plus and A in ABDC index journals such as International Journal of Hospitality Management, Journal of Retailing and Consumer Services, Business Strategy and Environment, Journal of Ecotourism, International Journal of Quality and Service Science, Journal of Islamic Marketing, Journal of Quality Assurance in Hospitality and Tourism, among others. He has also presented papers in international and national conferences, which includes American Marketing Association, Indian Institute of Ma uh, Management, Ahmedabad, I am Calcutta, I am Kozikod, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He's also, uh, uh, during 2020, he received a base paper award. Besides being on the reviewers panel of reputed A plus and A grade journals of Palgrave, Macmillan, Elsevier, Springler, and Grant, he has also reviewed chapters for research methodology book, Business Research Methods, by Cooper and Schindler, published by Mackerel Hill. He has successfully worked on externally sponsored projects from central government agency. His most recent accomplishment was the granting of two patent by the Commissioner of Patent, IPH Australia, that's Australian government. One in smart agriculture, and the second is in using blockchain technology to control counterfeiting in the aviation supply chain. His research-related visit had been to uh, several countries, such as Singapore, Malaysia, Kingdom um, of Saudi Arabia, and Thailand. Lastly, I would like to thank the esteemed organizer of this FDP for providing the opportunity to introducing the speaker of this session. So, on behalf of you and on behalf of Department of Management, School of Management and Business Studies, Jamia Hamdat, New Delhi, in collaboration with AICT Atal, I, Karuna Zato, request today's speaker to enlighten us with his knowledge and expertise in this area. Will you all participate in a very thought-provoking session? Okay, well, well thank you, Karuna, <coughs> for the lovely introduction. Okay, so let me... Hope my screen is visible. <coughs> yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, before we start with mediation and moderation, it is uh, pertinent that we must have a, a fair understanding as to why 
what is the importance of mediation and moderation in today's life, especially in the field of uh, social science or per se management. I was I was talking to one of the faculty from I am uh, the other day and we 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 he actually helped us re recalling as to if we go back to the year 2005 at that point of time most of the publications were uh, around regression ANOVA and even even uh, PhD used to be uh, granted on the basis of ANOVA regression. Although, although the concept of uh, structural equation mo modeling, if, if we try to tra track its root, it goes back to 1980s, uh, mid 1980s or uh, something like that. So it took somewhere around uh, a decade or two to reach to India. So probably after 2010, you will start uh, getting some publications that revolves around uh, covariance based structural equation modeling. And slowly and gradually, we started seeing a debate amongst the researchers that, uh, uh, and, and they, they came up with, with a new type of structural equation modeling. I mean, the, the, there are two types of structural equation modeling. One is the PLS-based SEM, the other one is the CB-based CB SEM. So initially, we started with CB. And at that point of time, one of the most popular software used to be IBM MS. So uh, more, during 2010 uh, to 2013, 2015, you will get a number of publications which actually have used IBM MS and, and uh, uh, to, to run uh, structural equation modeling. But slowly and gradually, if you, if you try, we are in 2021, and if you try to uh, go deeper into uh, some of the databases and you try to dig out uh, some of the recent publication, you will realize the fact that a structural equation modeling in isolation, individually, it won't help you in uh, getting your publication. So what is, uh, what, what is the uh, solution for this? So now, in fact, reviewers, editor-in-chief uh, of, of top-tier journals, now they have started recommend, recommending that you should use mediation and moderation in your, in your uh, model. So, in fact, in fact, he he uh, explained one of the example wherein some of the reviewers they have questioned that from where you got these variables. So, are, I mean, this this is quite habitual for us uh, that, and it is in fact easy, convenient for us as like going into the literature and digging out some four, five, six, seven uh, variables, and then we we build certain relationship between them, and then we run it, and then we get cert certain results. Now the question that arises, because I, I could see that some of you are research scholars, some of you are obviously must be faculty. So <clears throat> the, the very basic questions that arose was uh, from where you got these five or seven variables? How did you identify that these seven variables are important? Because if you go and scan through the literature, you will get 50 or hundreds of uh, variables. So why these sevens or why, why these five variables? So recent publication, if you go by the, some of the recent publication, we, we will realize the fact that, that uh, researchers, they are now introducing a number of things in order to get their publications published, manu manuscript accepted. For example, uh, <clears throat> some top tier journals, they are actually uh, urge the uh, researchers to go for multiple studies in their, in their research papers. Then there are certain level of uh, uh, journals who actually uh, recommend uh, researchers to come up with certain several uh, mediation, mediator or moderation, moderators, or, or even uh, a fusion of both. Then, then we, we could also see that there are certain publications that are coming up with, they are, they are going for experimentation. So study one could be experiment and then study two will be the survey on, on the basis of whatever we have uh, obtained from the experiment from, from a study one. So probably uh, the results of a study one would help us to conduct a study two. So that's how, that's how, uh, I mean, journals, people, um, editor in chief, they are recommending the uh, usage of mediation and moderation in your papers. Now, having set the back, this background, 
let's start with the ppt so yeah so i was i was saying that that from where you got these variables so this was the question actually and then then the the, the uh, faculty member for am i am he said that that uh, now they are suggesting that we should come up with qualitative uh, you know, techniques in order to identify as to what all are the prominent variables that could be used in our uh, uh, say manuscript or in our thesis so there could be a phenomena and uh, we may have 50 or hundreds of variables but how how did we identify that these five or seven variables or 10 variables would be prominent these are the prominent variables and they are going to explain the phenomena how how did we arrive at uh, this particular decision so for that reason they are suggesting that we should go for some qualitative techniques in order to identify the variables i'm not saying that i am try trying to establish certain relationship between independent and dependent variables or per se i'm simply saying that how how we actually identify a particular set of variables that need to be supported by certain qualitative techniques there are n number of techniques Uh, most popularly are fuzzy fuzzy demetal hp fuzzy and then on operations field people are is still using uh, tism uh, uh, mtism which was actually proposed in the year 2017 and most recent is uh, i guess mtism p so there are n number of i mean uh, techniques uh, qualitative based techniques that actually helps us in identifying as to these variables are prominent from that perspective or not then comes the second stage of developing the model and establishing the relationship between one variable and and the second variable okay so uh, moving on to understand what mediation and moderation is so we are going to understand some basic conceptual understanding of the both the terms and then we will uh, try some experiments doing 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 the uh, using the ibm spss uh, mos okay so uh, as as we have seen that interest in mediation and moderation uh, over the period of time has has increased so from 1981 to 1993 it was 43 and over the period of time it got uh, it was increasing and it, it ultimately reached to some 2010 2015 to 2598 close to 2600 publications were in and around either they have used mediation or in moderation or 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 both so before we start understanding uh, and and running the software there are several terms that we must uh, understand uh, and they are going to come repetitively throughout the uh, ppt so indicators indicators most of us we use survey method to uh, collect data so uh, those items that we place in our questionnaire and then we uh, approach to respondents to collect the data so those are the indicators so indicators whenever i say indicators actually i am referring to those items that we have that we actually include in our questionnaire then endogenous constructs exogenous construct in 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 short we can understand that endogenous is nothing but the dependent variable and in in case uh, exogenous is nothing but independent variable and whenever we talk about mediation there the, there are three terms that are more imp most important actually one is the uh, indirect effect the the second was one is the direct effect one is the indirect effect the second is the direct effect and then we have a total effect so always remember indirect effect indirect effect it simply means that there is something in between the two variables so indirect means if if we are trying to establish a relationship between say independent variable independent and this is dependent so indirect indirect means we are going through via something else and this is actually m here we have m so this is indirect effect and it has been defined as are those relationships that involve a sequence of relationships a sequence of relationships with at least one intervening construct one intervening construct so one intervening construct is nothing but the mediator that we have actually introduced into the model 
we will see at a later stage as to why there is a need for mediation and what would happen if we introduce mediation uh, mediator variable then we have a direct effect direct effect are the relationship which links two construct with a single arrow we have a single arrow this is this was independent variable this is dependent variable and then we have a single arrow which which actually establishes the relationship between the two so direct effect when we try to establish a relationship between independent and dependent indirect effect when we try to reach to this place from independent to dependent via via the mediating variable <clears throat> okay so uh, yeah then mediating effect mediation mediation model and mediator variable it could be defined as a situation in which one or or more mediator variables facilitate the explanation of the relationship it explains the relationship between two or other variable constructs so mediator it explains the relationship so either we call it mediating effect either we call it uh, mediation or mo mediation model so it basically helps in explaining the relationship relationship between what between the independent and dependent and then moderating effect moderation be it moderator effect or moderator moderator variable it is uh, it occurs when the effect of one latent variable on another latent variable depends on the value of the third variable third variable which is referred to as a moderator variable we will see to it at uh, uh, a later in, in whenever i am going to discuss about moderation so let's start with the basic understanding of mediation uh, in simple terms a mediating effect is created when a third variable or construct intervenes between two other related constructs so we have one construct here one construct here and then we are introducing a third variable which is called as mediator so the moment we start introducing a mediator this becomes indirect and then yes this this will be a fit case of mediation now for a variable to qualify as a potential mediator to qualify as a potential mediator it must be located between the predictor and the outcome between the independent between the independent and the outcome so mediator must be placed somewhere in between the uh, independent and dependent variable or talking in terms of uh, structural equation modeling so exogenous and endogenous variable so according to, to the theory the predictor must precede the mediator in some clear manner predictor that is the independent or exogenous variable must precede the mediator then mediating effects highlight the distinction between direct and indirect effect so this is what we have actually seen previously that what is direct effect what is indirect effect so mediating effect we will try to analyze on the basis of the direct effect difference between difference dis distinction so difference difference between direct and indirect effects okay so uh, direct effects are the relationship linking two constructs with a single arrow indirect effects are those relationships that sir you are not audible i think Rajin, you're not audible. He's joining again. Please wait.
in the meanwhile, please, if you haven't downloaded the data set, which he is going to just work on, please, we, we have mailed you the data set. Please download it uh, from your mail or say you can use it from your WhatsApp also. Wherever you, you, you just find convenient, just download it just from there. Just be ready with the data set. Uh, there's some technical glitch at the end of the resource person. Uh, he's trying to just uh, resolve it out. So we, we are sorry for the inconvenience.
Yes, Nilakshi. Do you have any question, Nilakshi? Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay. So, actually, I was continuously going on with the PPT, and uh, I thought that it I am connected. <laughs> right, now, right now, I realize that oh, I was disconnected somehow. <laughs> you were disconnected for a long time, actually. Yeah. Right? Yes. 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 We have been trying to call you, but your mobile was switched off. I don't know. I mean, I mean, uh, okay. So can you uh, start with the direct and indirect, please? Actually, I was skip moving to the PC. Ha, my my mobile karta hu. Mediation and direct and indirect. Yes, my mobile karta hu. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that uh, I was disconnected. No issue. That's the beauty of technology. <laughs> <laughs> that is a side effect of technology because I have gone. So just let me know which slide uh, I was. We were we were done with this thing. We were done with with this one. Okay. So we were we were uh, about to start this one. Participants, let me know. Uh, Participants, please respond uh, so that uh, Dr. Adil can continue. Uh, Dr. Adil, I think uh, if you start with your third or fourth uh, slides, it's better because uh, you are disconnected in the initial stage. Oh, this is the third or fourth. Uh... Yes, yes, we have discussed key terms and uh... yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through key terms, I was requesting for direct and indirect effect, uh, if possible, sir. Yeah, this, from this here. This was the slide that we were actually discussing upon. And the first two paragraphs were done. We started with the third one. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> once again, uh, mediating effects highlight that that the distinction between direct and indirect effects. Okay, so we we have to take out the uh, difference between the direct and indirect effect. Okay, so direct effect. We have we all we have already seen what di direct effects is what what indirect effects are, and ultimately, actually, okay. Uh, so uh, this this is a this is a uh, say uh, 
pet figure for mediation wherein we have one one variable as mediator and we have one independent variable and one dependent variable so so indirect effect is a sequence of two or more direct effects indirect effects here is a sequence of two or more direct effects now from where we are getting two direct effects when we are talking about indirect effects so these two direct effects are actually k to m this is independent this is dependent and then m to e m becomes independent and then e becomes dependent so path a and path b these are actually our two direct effects so uh, does an indirect effect is a sequence of two or more direct effects and is represented visually by a multiple arrows the following diagram show both direct effect that is k to e so when whenever we are talking about k k to e this is our direct effect and an indirect effect of k on e in the form of k to m and m to e sequence so it, it's it's very important to understand what uh, indirect effect what direct effect is so direct effect in a very layman manner let's understand that uh, the direct effect is nothing but the relationship between independent and dependent variable and this has been shown through k to e k to e but the moment we start talking about indirect effect indirect effect from k to e it is it goes through k to m and m to e so this is called indirect effects we are actually reaching to e but via some other intervening variables that is called mediator hope this is clear because ultimately the whole mediation actually revolves around this these two things only the direct effect and the indirect effect is it clear i'm am i connected yes sir. okay okay so hope hope these two things are uh, clear that uh, uh, yeah okay so now you might have a question as to why we should have we, we need actually another uh, intervening variable or the third variable between a and b or say between between independent and dependent now this slide is very very important for that perspective because from a from a theoretical perspective the most common application of mediation is to explain to explain mediation it actually explains what why a relationship between two constructs exists it helps us in explaining as to why there is a relationship between uh, between say uh, in, uh, independent and dependent variable so we may observe a relationship between constructs example k and e and not know why it exists we can then posit some explanation in terms of an intervening or facilitating variable intervening or facilitating variable uh, directly we can say, call it mediator so we can then explain it with the help of mediate mediating variable which operates to take input from k and translate them into output e here m is the intervening variable it is the third variable that we have introduced it into our model otherwise our life would have been very very simple like we have independent variable we have dependent variable we could have gone for regression we could have gone for the relationship but this will not this relationship the uh, the the relationship between the uh, uh, the independent and dependent variable this is not going to explain us as to why some sort of relationship exists between these two so for, for that reason we need another variable that will be introduced in between these two variables and that will that is going to be called as mediator okay so the beauty of mediator is the beauty of mediator is that that it takes inputs from k that is independent variable it takes inputs from independent variable and then it does not hold it with itself rather it translate it it translate it it transfers it to what to the dependent variable so either we can directly go to this place i mean this is uh, 
var uh, dependent variable so we can directly go to this dependent variable so that will be called as direct effect but when we are actually introducing uh, another new variable to and that's two in the middle of these two constructs so obviously uh, the the mediator that is going to take certain inputs from the from the independent variable and that is going to be reflected into dependent variable this is something very important this is important so first thing that we can uh, draw from this uh, particular slide is that that mediator actually helps us in explaining as to why a relationship between two constructs exists now that is the reason why most of the reviewers and editor in chief they are recommending that you must come up with mediation and moderation because we may have some sort of relationship koi bhi variable if you if you are going to put any variable k e e f f g any variable you will get some sort of relationship you will either it is minus it, it is it, it it is positive it is is it, either it will be significant it will be insignificant some sort some sort of things will you will come but but we will never know as to why this sort of relationship exists between independent and dependent and for that reason actually mediation and actually comes into picture and it it helps us in explaining why there is a relationship between uh, independent and dependent so <clears throat> here we are going to take an example uh, i hope this is going to make more clear as to what uh, or how mediation actually works so here k and e again refer to the same figure here we have k here we have e and m is mediator remember this thing k is independent e is dependent and m is mediator so so here the construct k could be a student's intelligence now here we are we are going to name the, uh, the variable earlier we we were discussing in k and e and m now we are going to name it i mean yeah so this is a student's intelligence k is has been explained as a student's intelligence and e our dependent variable could be classroom performance a student's classroom performance so we could have directly gone for a student's intelligence trying a relationship between uh, say a student's intelligence and his classroom performance but again the question is that how it works can we explain how students translate their intelligence into performance now this is a key question like how how a student is translating his intelligence into his classroom performance because it it is assumed that a, per, a student with higher intelligence will will perform better in his uh, class in his exam this is our uh, hypothesis so we may find that sometimes a student exhibits high intelligence he may have high level of intelligence but does not always perform well but does not always perform well so at times his performance does not does not match to his intelligence his level of intelligence and at times we see that some students with lower intelligence scores perform extremely well so is there some other process going on is there something hidden behind this these two variables that that actually works that is invisible that need to be explored okay so is there some other process going on that translates a student intelligence into actual classroom performance question mark so then we can we can think of uh, a mediator so in this case we could propose a construct termed study effectiveness here we have we are introducing m which is study effectiveness and how how can we uh, say define a study effectiveness so a study effectiveness is nothing but the ability of the students to focus their efforts to focus their efforts on their class work organize their class related and other activities to provide them with sufficient time to complete their homework and the other good study habits so there could be a relationship between uh, intelligence and the actual performance classroom performance of a student but still we are 
unaware of as to what is the what how how actually it translates intelligence translates into actual performance so a study effectiveness has been introduced as mediator and a study effectiveness is the ability of the students to focus their efforts the efforts that uh, that a student is putting on on his study so on their classwork organize their class related and other activities to provide them with sufficient time to complete their homework and other good study habits and other good study habits all are these part of study effectiveness so if a student is intelligent this quality may encourage which quality i am talking about study effectiveness is is organizing his uh, class related activities his his focus on his uh, class work efforts so this quality may encourage the student to study longer and better which could result in higher classroom performance now this is uh, say a deeper understanding of why k has been translated into e it is the effort effort so a study effectiveness so in such a case the significance correlation between k and e would be explained by k to m to e sequence of relationship and therefore we can say that the study effectiveness mediates the relationship between students intelligence and classroom performance so this is the basic conceptual understanding of mediation and for testing mediation for testing mediation we generally we refer to the seminal work uh, work of uh, baron and kenny they have actually proposed the idea how, how of how we can calculate uh, mediation and moderation and that's too in the year 1986 and this is one of one of their highly cited work as well more than 1 lakh of citations they have received are we still connected yes yes sir yes sir okay 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 so yeah so testing for mediation so baron kenny they have suggested that he, like like in this in this case you see that uh, there is no mediator so x to y and then this path is c this this path is being denoted with c and with mediator means indirect effect and then we we will have a series of relationships a b c hash something like that so what this they have suggested i mean baron kenny they have suggested like that we can calculate we can run mediation analysis in our model using these four steps although there are certain several criticism to their steps i will discuss them at a later stage but let's understand as to how can we run mediation using baron kenny's method so they have suggested they have simply suggested four steps so step number 1 they said they say that that okay this is our independent this is our dependent so the very first relationship that we need to establish is between independent and dependent and they say that that it should be significant so the relationship between depend, uh, independent and dependent step 1 this should be significant if the if we get significant uh, result then okay then let's move to the step number 2 step number 2 it says that x to m x here is the independent variable m here is the mediating variable and then we are going to establish a relationship between x and m if we get this value as uh, significant then we are going to move to step number 3 step number 3 says that m to y m here is mediator and y is dependent variable so we are talking we are referring to b here b okay and then in step 4 step 4 is between again between x and y in the presence of mediator in the presence of mediator this is going to be called as c hash now uh, there there have been criticism like professor hayes and uh, hair et al they have actually raised se several concerns with respect to uh, the 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 method that have been proposed by baron kenny they say that that two direct effects cannot give us indirect effect 
okay effects cannot give us indirect effects and, and in short what they have they have actually summarized it like if your initial uh, relationship between independent and dependent if it becomes zero means that if it becomes insignificant then we can say that there is there is that there is a case of full mediation so professor hayes and professor hayertal they have made our life very easy because they have divided mediation into two either it will be a case of full mediation either it will be case of partial mediation so full mediation when the relationship between x and y becomes zero or say insignificant and this relationship via mediation is significant so the original relationship between x and y that is independent and dependent becomes insignificant and with the introduction of m that is mediator and if the relationship via mediator remains significant then in that case this is a full case of full mediation this is a perfect case of full mediation but at times we will see that that uh, the original relationship between independent and dependent it doesn't become insignificant rather there is a reduction reduction in the value okay so in that case our our mediation that is indirect effect is also significant our direct effect is also significant so in that case we we can say that there is a par, uh, that the the uh, mediation is partial in nature as the the direct relationship has not been uh, has not become zero or has not uh, reduced to zero so directly coming to the analysis so i'm i hope that you might have received the data set can we start the exercise yes yes dr adil we can yeah It's a heavy software, so it will take some time. So are you ready with the, the data set participants Yes sir Okay Yes. So we have these variables with us. Ritika, is there anything you want to ask? No, sir. Okay. Please. Okay. So I hope you have this data set. So there are several questions. I have removed uh, the their labels. and then i uh, in fact just to teach you to explain you how how mediation is being done so what i did is that i have converted uh, computed them the, the indicators have been computed into variables and then and then i have renamed them as mediator exogenous and endogenous so for that uh, what we can do we can start with ms
Okay. Hope you all of you are following me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only Komal. Okay. So once this MOS uh, window is open, so what we can do is that first we will go and select our file. Mediation data set, yes. Press OK. And this is selected. Yeah, now we have all these those uh, indicators as well as variables. Is it done? Yes, sir. OK. So next, what we can do, we can open these variables. And then directly, we can place all of our variables. For example, exogenous, so it should be placed here. We have endogenous, endogenous placed here. Mediator placed here. This is how we have seen our, in our, uh, say, PPT. Yes. Independent, dependent, mediator. Similarly, independent, dependent, mediator. Okay. Is it done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we are going to place the linkage, the arrows from exogenous to mediator, from mediator to endogenous, and then from exogenous to endogenous. Uh, Dr. Adil, there is a question in the Yeah. Asad, your mic is off. Sorry, uh, Dr. Atil, uh, the, the question is in the chat box that it would be a rectangle, rectangular or ellipse. Variable. No, it would be rectangular. Like this one. Because I'm not including the uh, indicators. No? If had I, had I gone for uh, indicators, then at that point of time, I might have gone for like this one. And then I could have included variables. Say, for example, like this one, Q1, Q2, Q3. Assuming that this is my, uh, say, the fact. Yeah, this is my construct, exogenous variable. Okay, then we could have gone for the, uh, similarly we, we could have gone for endogenous as well, like uh, assuming that there are four indicators that actually explain our uh, dependent variable and then Ten, eleven, twelve, and similarly the mediator, and then we are going to place a similar kind of relationship between exogenous to endogenous, and then exogenous to mediator, and then mediator to endogenous.
Is it done? Yeah. Participants, please respond so that. Uh... Please keep responding. Otherwise, I will feel like I am. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so now, now we have drawn our uh, model. Now, next, what we are going to do is that we are going to our analysis properties. And we are going to place a tick mark over those things that we actually require for our mediation. So importantly, we require standardized estimates. And most importantly, the indirect, direct, and total effects. Because the whole mediation actually, it revolves around direct, indirect, and total effects. So we are going to <coughs> put a tick. And then if it is done, then go to bootstrap. And we need to perform bootstrap actually. In mediation, we need to perform bootstrap. And bias correctedness, <coughs> confidence to remove uh, biasness in the sample. And we are going to place it at 95. Once we are done, when, when in, we are only need to take care of bootstrap and bias correctedness, confidence intervals, only these two things. In output, we have placed a tick before standardized estimates and indirect, direct, and total effects. Now that's it. Now we need to run the analysis. No, we also, since this is our independent variable, we need to place unobserved variables. Now we are going to run it. We got some values over here, 0 0.24, 0 0.16, 0 0.31. But we are more interested into knowing the direct, indirect, and uh, total effect. So for that reason, we need to click on the output. Here is the output. And directly go to estimates. Estimates. If, we, if you look at, see, exogenous to mediator, once again, see, exogenous to mediator, here, exogenous to mediator, this is significant. This should be less than 0 0.05. So this is significant. Then mediator, this is mediator to, look at the arrow, it goes to endogenous. So from mediator to endogenous. It's again significant. Okay, so this one is significant. This one is significant. L let's see exogenous to endogenous. Exogenous to endogenous. So this is insignificant. This should be 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.05. So in a way, we can say that that this is a full case. This is a perfect case of full mediation because our exogenous to endogenous has become insignificant. And the, this, vary, this relationship actually between exogenous to mediator and also mediator to endogenous, uh, both are significant, highly significant in fact. If we go to the matrices, and let's have a look at the standardized total effects. See, before looking at the total effects, Let's have a look at the indirect effects. So indirect effect is 0 0.080, okay? Then this is also significant. So indirect effect, exogenous to endogenous, okay? So, and then look at direct effects. Yeah, 
एक्सोजीनियस टू मीडिएटर पॉइंट टू फोर जीरो एक्सोजीनियस टू मीडिएटर पॉइंट टू फोर जीरो दिस इज एंड देन एक्सोजीनियस टू एंडोजीनियस पॉइंट वन सिक्स फोर एक्सोजीनियस टू एंडोजीनियस पॉइंट वन सिक्स फोर सो इम्पॉर्टेंटली वी कैन वी कैन ड्रॉ कंक्लूजन दैट अवर मीडिएटर एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मीडिएटर एंड मॉडरेटर सो इट इज अ परफेक्ट केस ऑफ फुल मीडिएशन वाई बिकॉज द फर्स्ट रिलेशनशिप दैट इज एक्सोजीनियस टू मीडिएटर एक्सोजीनियस टू मीडिएटर सेकेंड रिलेशनशिप मीडिएटर टू एंडोजीनियस मीडिएटर टू एंडोजीनियस बोथ आर सिग्निफिकेंट अनलाइक द थर्ड रिलेशनशिप between exogenous to endogenous okay now quickly move to uh, moderation hope this is clear yes sir any question from anyone just quickly move to dr adil i i yeah subhash has some question dr adil my question is how we got the endogenous and exogenous and mediator uh, values in the table how you got that in the table yes i think uh, he is asking yes. computation yes how we calculated the endogenous and exogenous values and a mediator value because we have the those values in already available in the data set acha how did how did we actually compute uh, this is what your question is yes. so th that is that is very simple uh, like any other variable that we go for uh say we have we have here transform go to compute it's yes. mean i think no he, his no, question is that mean of it is not a mean i think his question is like uh, from where we got this uh, mediator and uh, exogenous and endogenous variable like right sir right so yeah because uh, see say uh, we we have a questionnaire and there are there are say 10 questions 10 items related to it so four items let's assume that four items re relate to mediator four items relate to independent variable and remaining two items relate to dependent variable is is it fine to follow right right sir okay okay then in that case what we are going to do is that see then in that i i i i suppose that you have collected data say this is this is your question number 1 and up to question number 10 and you might have collected responses from how many response say i assume that you have uh, approached 120 people and they have responded so yeah we have we have 10 questions assuming that first four questions relates to exogenous next four questions relate to uh, your mediator and last two questions actually relates to uh, your endogenous that is dependent variable so how can we actually convert them into uh, uh, variable so because these are these are individual items so first we need to go to transform compute variable let's uh, type it like uh, exogenous exogenous variable then is it visible yes sir yes sir okay. yes. yeah then then go to statistical here click on it then you will get a number of function over here so we are going to click on sum and the moment we click on double double click it and then you will get over here so this question mark is need to be replaced by the number of items that we have so as i said that for exogenous we have uh, say four question, four items in our questionnaire so i'm going to replace these question marks with the items so first question number 1 always remember that we must have a comma right after any of the items that we place in between these uh, th this uh, function so question number 1 followed by comma and then question number 2 then again a comma and question number 3 and again a comma and question number 4 okay that's done because uh, in this example we consider that there are that that there are four items that actually explain exogenous and then we need to 
divided by four to take a mean of this. Okay, some Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 divided by four. Had it been three, so we could have gone for three. Right now we have four items, so ultimately we are going for four and then we are going to press okay and then execute. Now we have this new variable which is known as exogenous. So that's how I, I have created my mediator exogenous and endogenous variable. Hope th this answers your questions. Okay, all are so uh, it's an average, average value of all. Yes, exactly, exactly. Sir? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Actually, I so I am not able to actually report it in that way that uh, direct indirect effect and value so can how, you uh, how explain this is, this is what, yeah, what your yeah. question is that how when whenever we run a mediation yes, analysis yes, so how this should be projected or re, uh, reported in, uh, your, in, your, in your thesis yeah, or yeah. in your manuscript something like yeah, that because i got three tables in that yes 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 okay so generally uh, we have seen that uh, researchers what they do is that they they, they try to compile those four or uh, say five, five different tables into one they try to combine it into one because uh, I don't know whether it is it is being demanded by the journals or it is being recommended by someone, but they try to combine it into one. Like, I, I will give you an example. Yeah, that I was not able to understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will, I will give you an example that how people, they are doing it. Okay, let's take the example of this paper and they have, yeah, see, first they have drawn the structural model and then they have shown mediation model. Yes. Okay, okay. And let's see how they have actually reported it into their more paper. Results of mediation analysis, indirect effects between dependent and dependent variable. So since they have run, uh, they have used a process, probably, I'm not sure whether they have run, gone for PLS SEM or uh, the process. Yeah, PLS. So that's the reason why they they have got uh, the LLCI and ULCI and boot LLCI and boot L ULCI these values and as I said earlier see this is the direct effect this is path A and then we have we can see that this is mediator so indirect effect since we and since the researchers they have used two mediators parallel mediator mediation so one mediator is this one one mediator is this one and then they try to establish the relationship between independent to dependent why are these two mediators and ultimately that has been yeah they ha that has been explained in these two tables itself see cl and ri cl and ri was mediator so you can you can actually download this paper you can download this paper and follow this paper. Ultimately, this is going to help you how to report it into in, in, in a manuscript or or in a 
uh, thesis. Yeah, what we get different table, sir. You got a different table. Yeah. So did you use uh, uh, process? I have read the paper, paper also, and yeah. uh, the effect has been explained in a different way. So I'm not not able. We can to we can discuss it at a, at a later stage. I mean, this is one to one, so we can discuss discuss it at a later stage. Okay. Okay, fine. I mean, that's that has nothing to do with the the functionality of the mediation or moderation, rather how. It's a part of actually. I have so, also discussed in la later on uh, uh, previous uh, session also that they said that it's a part of mediation. So you will uh, get to know about it in that mediation and moderation when we will let, discuss. Let, let me complete the moderation and then I will directly come to this this part. Okay. 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 So thank okay. you, Doctor Adil. I have one question. Personal question, and not that much personal, but yes, related to this mediation one thing. Is it compulsory to uh, just compute uh, the variables of to just calculate mediation? No, and then this is this is not uh, necessary actually. As I said previously, that we can uh, we can take the indicators directly to the MOS. Okay, we we can do that thing exactly, also. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. That that could also be done. Okay. Just, just to save my time, I, I did it this way. Okay. Otherwise, that is also possible. Okay. Then let's move to moderation. Hope this is clear. Always remember, mediation means why a relationship between x that is independent and dependent, and uh, relationship exist. Why this relationship exist actually, and it is being explained by mediator. So always remember, whenever we have to explain why something is going on. Something is latent, something is hidden. Then we try to introduce our our, our uh, mediator. Moving on from here, yeah. now coming to moderator. Okay, moderator. Let's. Most effects that scientists study are contingent on one thing or another. An effect may be large for women and small for men, or positive among certain types of people, but negative among other types, or zero for one category of stimuli, but not zero for another category. Again, I am repeating that most effects that scientists or researchers study. are contingent on one thing or another so an effect could be large for women but small for men or positive among certain types of people and negative among other types or zero for one category of stimuli but not zero for another category so when an investigator seeks to determine whether a certain variable influences or is related to the size of one variable's effect on another a moderation analysis is the proper analytical strategy okay so how how moderator has been defined an independent variable that changes the nature of the relationship now this is something important try to understand this one that changes the nature of the relationship earlier we were uh exploring the the reasons for introducing mediation so me, for introducing mediation is that that why, why there is a relationship between x and y x is the independent and y is dependent so actually mediation mediate mediating a uh, variable it actually explains why there is a relationship between uh the independent and dependent or how this uh, the 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 relationship translates into the dependent variable so so mediation tries to uh, answer why why there is a relationship but here in moder in case of moderation we try to introduce a, a a new variable that with a with a with an intent to change the nature of the relationship changes the nature of the relationship between exogenous and endogenous okay so exogenous is there we have an independent we have dependent variable and then we are introducing we are introducing another variable in order to find out whether it it 
changes the nature of the relationship that usually exists between independent and dependent okay so for example if a researcher examined the relation we, I, we, we will discuss a couple of uh, examples probably that will make uh, the concept of moderation more clear to you so <clears throat> for example if if a researcher examined the relationship between gender and math performance a significant difference might emerge again for example if a researcher examined the relationship between gender and math performance a significant difference might emerge however if teaching style were taken into account such that those who learn math by applied hands on methods performed better than those who learn with traditional lecture styles regardless of their gender so teaching style we are focusing upon teaching style we are introducing teaching style and then we are trying to find out the relationship between gender and math performance and teaching style it includes that people, uh, students who have learned math by applied or hands on methods in comparison to what the traditional lecture styles one could say that teaching style was a moderator of the relationship between gender and math performance also called moderating variable so teaching style is moderating variable now the effect that occurs when a third variable changes the nature of the relationship the effect that occurs when a third variable changes the nature of the relationship between a predictor and an outcome this is independent this is dependent for example SEM can be used to assess whether a predicted association between quantitative skill and performance fit equally well across different teaching style groups, so lecture based versus hands on learning. So, the difference between mediation and moderation per se is the fact that that in uh, case of moderation, you will realize the fact that W, that is the moderator variable, it doesn't take any input from the independent variable unlike mediation we have seen that in med in case of mediation the mediating variable actually takes input from the independent variable and then it translates it into the into the uh, dependent variable but here you will realize the fact that it doesn't involve itself into the model rather moderating it influencing it from a distance unlike mediation which actually takes input from x and actually involves itself into the the whole model and then it translates it into the the dependent variable here in moderation see you will in in any of the mod, uh, model you you will realize that uh, uh, moderations always they have an arrow on the relationships in between somewhere okay so we will be taking this example like in moderation see here environmental orientation is our independent variable for the next example that i'm going to take so there i, I will be taking environmental orientation as a uh, independent variable green apparel buying behavior as our dependent variable and monetary incentives as our moderator so environmental orientation green apparel buying behavior and monetary incentives further what is environmental orientation environmental orientation is referred to as the degree of an individual's commitment towards environmental safety it is the commitment of an individual okay towards what towards safety of the environment how how committed that individual is how committed that individual is towards saving the environment so ultimately ultimately this is this is our independent variable and then we have green apparel buying behavior as dependent variable and in in between these two we have monetary incentives and the hypothesis the background of this model is the fact that that we have seen a number of people who are highly committed and they show their commitment by i mean, I mean verbally they show their commitments that yes i am very much interested into saving the environment yes people should uh, uh, collectively they should work towards saving the environment but when it actually comes to practice 
then you will find a drastic gap between their their uh, words and then their actions so for that reason we are trying to introduce a new third variable that which is called as monetary incentives or say discounts being if marketers they start giving certain certain level of discounts cash bags e wallets uh, money something like that and what how this is going to actually change the relationship between these two hope it makes some sense so so uh, yeah so so there are only three variables now moving on let's see how can we actually run moderation analysis so the very first thing that we are going to do is that see this dependent variable remains remain untouched so we are going to place uh, dependent variable yeah the very first step we are going to do is uh, the is going to test the relationship between independent and dependent then in step 2 we are going to test the relationship between mo uh, moderator and the the Uh, dependent variable. Again, in step one, the relation the relationship between independent and dependent. In step two, the relationship between moderator and the dependent variable. And in third step, this is the last step. And what we do is that we are going to take the interaction effect, that is multiplication of the independent variable and monetary incentives, that is our moderator. okay now i will take an example here yeah green apparel buying behavior Yeah. Here. So here, environmental orientation, independent variable, green apparel buying behavior, dependent, endogenous, and then we have used two moderators. One is environmental knowledge, and the second one is monetary incentives. Is it clear? now i am going to take up the uh, data set for moderation have you all opened the file yes sir okay so see this is our independent variable as per the model see environmental orientation this is environmental orientation eo environmental orientation simply variable so this is our independent variable gabb green apparel buying behavior this is our dependent variable yes and then we have environmental knowledge in short ek so here we have ek then monetary incentives here we have mi monetary incentives importantly importantly we have to create interaction effect okay so for that we can go to transform go to compute and take see interaction effect could be created by multiplying 
the the independent variable with moderator so here we go to again go to transform go to compute variable write it down here like uh, we have to find out uh, say interaction interaction of moderator one okay an interaction of moderator one and how can we create we need to multiply what independent variable eo environmental orientation c environmental orientation with ek and again with incentives so e eo environmental orientation place multiplication sign then this is environmental knowledge environmental knowledge ek is moderator so we are going to place this as well now once this is done is it done yes sir okay then press sorry press okay execute interaction so we have created interaction effect again let's go for the second one for second one we will go to transform we will go to compute variable reset it now we are going to name it like interaction underscore this is our moderator number two and how interaction can be created first we will have to take our independent variable here independent variable independent variable is same see independent variable environmental orientation so in either of the cases if we when while calculating all say interaction effect for environmental knowledge environment environmental orientation will remain as it is so our independent variable will remain as it is then put a multiplication sign then we are going to use mi mi variable this is monetary incentives place it if it is done press ok execute and then we got moderation too and at times at times i have seen people they, they also do uh, they they use uh, mean actually so they divided by two at times anyway so since we i have already created mieo mieo this is monetary incentives and environmental orientation this is an interaction effect environmental knowledge and eo this is also an interaction effect for moderator number two so since i already have so i will remove these two from my data set okay okay so next what we are going to do we are going to run it in ibm ms just to save my time i have already created this uh, figure i mean you can you can use as i have told you in in case of mediation you can similarly uh, input the data file then you can create the model so here if you look at this model you have you we have dependent variable here we have uh, this, this is our uh, independent variable environmental orientation then this is our moderator number one mi monetary incentives this is our moderator number two this is environmental knowledge and this is interaction effect of mi with eo this is interaction effect of our moderator number one and this is interaction effect of our moderator number two that's it now now what we are going to do in output 
is standardized. Now we don't need indirect, direct, and total effects. That was required in case of mediation, not in moderation. So we are going to place only standardized estimates. Now, and then we are going to run it. And the moment you run it, you will find certain outputs. OK, but we are more interested into going and finding out the, the result. So we will go to estimates. OK, estimates here. See, so here we are more interested into unstandardized regression weights, estimates, rather than standardized regression weights. So we, we have to look this table only. So now let's start with the interpretation. So EO, EO to GBB. This is our independent to dependent. And this is actually significant. OK, now let's move ahead and let's see MI to GBB. MI, this is our moderator number one. And this, this has to be tested against the the dependent variable and this is also coming uh, significant Let, let's first look at this one so for each moderator we need to test these three relationships so since we we have two moderators so eventually there will be five relationships again i'm saying that for each moderators we need to test these three relationships. So even if I consider only monetary incentive, so in that case, we will have this one, then this one, and then this one, these three relationships. Okay, so let's have a look. Again, environmental orientation. Environmental orientation to GABB. This is this is significant. Then, then monetary incentives to GABB. Then monetary incentives, monetary incentives to GABB. That is our dependent variable, and it is also significant. Now, let's have have a look at the interaction effect. M I E O. The interaction effect on what? on dependent variable this is the interaction effect and we need to test it on the dependent variable so mieo gabb this is also significant but, but somehow environmental knowledge if it if you try to check it out on a dependent variable simply simply uh, environmental knowledge as an individual uh, variable if we try to test it on the uh, dependent variable so it is not significant and even the interaction effect between the independent variable and environmental knowledge that we have actually created its effect on the dependent variable is also is also insignificant so how to interpret this thing so for that we will take the help of this uh, table so once again Exogenous variable is significant. Let's see. Exogenous is environmental orientation. Our dependent variable is uh, green apparel buying behavior. So, yeah, look here. Environmental orientation, green apparel buying behavior, independent, that is exogenous and endogenous. So, let's have a look. Exogenous to endogenous, significant. So, what there is the exogenous variable? If it is significant, then we will move and check about the moderator the moderator moderator is uh, say monetary incentives so let's have a look monetary incentives individually monetary incentive to dependent variable it is significant okay so yes it is also significant then we are going to te test for the interaction effect and that we have actually created by multiplying independent in, in this one and this one so interaction effect we will try to find it out and uh, yeah this one is the interaction effect 
and on the dependent variable and you will see that this is again significant so when we have all the three significance values so ultimately moderation effect is yes is it clear now going back to the environmental knowledge another another uh, moderator that we have in our model environmental knowledge now let's have a look so for environmental knowledge exogenous variable significant okay yeah so in, in uh, our exogenous variable is significant then moderator then we need to test moderator so ek this is simply variable ek on this one is insignificant so this is insignificant not significant then we are going to work look for the interaction effect okay so interaction effect is ek eo to our dependent variable and ultimately this is also insignificant so insignificant so moderator and interaction effect both are not significant although exogenous variable is significant yet there is no moderation effect so this is how we actually interpret it and then how can we report it it's it's reporting into uh, papers so let's have a look how people have reported it see here so since they might have gone for the process uh, process uh, tool so probably they, they might have got LLC LLC so yeah moderation yes 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 no 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 so th this is how uh, I mean they can report into a uh, table now another thing one step ahead of the uh, um, say once once you have once you got all these values so next thing that we generally go for is the uh, creation of this graph how can you do this you can take a mean of your your uh, variable whatever your variable is so here i have taken like monetary incentives you can take a mean of this so any any value below that mean will be called as low any uh, value above that mean will be called as high okay similarly high uh, uh, and low your uh, that one independent variable and ultimately you need to draw this using spaces then once you have uh, no, converted the, those uh, values into low and high and low and high so ultimately that is going to be projected into your spaces and you will get this this graph okay so now this graph actually shows what now this graph actually explains a lot of things see moderator low mi high mi high mi means high monetary incentives low monetary incentives low environmental orientation high environmental orientation see when when uh, an individual who is less committed towards saving the environment so irrespective of whether you are going to offer highest level of discounts or monetary incentives in any time in any of the forms be it low be it high it hardly matters so an individual who is less committed towards environment who hardly thinks about saving the environment or contributing towards saving the environment so be whether the marketers they are offering high monetary incentives or low monetary incentives it doesn't make any sense he will not start consuming uh, green uh, eco, eco friendly or environment friendly products but see for for, for the case of high, high environment or oriented people those who are high on uh, say uh, environment commitments and they think about it but somehow they are stopping themselves from buying any product so if uh, marketers they come up with certain certain level of policies or strategies which which uh, through which we, they can offer actually some sort of <clears throat> monetary discounts monetary incentives or even something like that so there is a high chance that these people will would be converted into uh, actual buyers they will start consuming the things now this is something important that 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 is meant for marketeers 
so high monetary incentives if being offered to those people who are actually committed so so if you ask me i if i have to replace a, a, a battery in my clock so probably i if i go to market i will get it in 8 rupees or 10 rupees but if i am highly committed towards saving the environment and if i if i really think seriously about saving the environment then i will explore uh, the options that do we have certain batteries do we have certain brands that offer batteries uh, which are eco friendly environment friendly and always remember environment friendly products they come for uh, they charge premium they charge premium price for them for that so many a times we feel that we are although we are interested into saving the environment yet there are certain things that stops us so one could be monet mon uh, our monetary uh, say um, burden that is going to be on our pocket so if marketers they come up with some strategies and they start offering us certain level of discounts so probably a highly committed person he will be transformed into the actual buyer, buyer and he will start uh, consuming the same thing and this the same thing happens with environmental knowledge so we see i many a times i say this this thing that whenever you use any variable be it immediate or be it moderate why did you use it that is not a big deal because ultimately you are going to use it and the software is going to give some result but you need to have certain level of justification and rationality for using and justifying the the, the result that you have obtained so here i have said that that people are stopping from consuming the the green based products or environment friendly products just because they are highly price conscious they are price conscious price sensitive people and probably that is a deterrent from from uh, say consuming environment friendly products they might they might be thinking about contributing to environment safety yet they are not actually involving themselves why because there is there are certain factors there are factors which are uh, stopping them barrier uh, which could be act, which could act as a barrier so when we talk of environmental knowledge and if if we say that that uh, the, uh, we we have obtained that um, environmental knowledge doesn't come out to be a significant moderate in, in our case so we can explain this in our manuscript in our uh, in our research paper that people they might be aware of although uh, they are they are committed and they might be aware of the the products and policies of the government the policies of the mar marketers they might be aware of the existence of the environment friendly products in, into the market so that is not a big motivator for them to actually start purchasing however in case of monetary incentives monetary this could act as a big motivator for any for for such kind of persons to start consuming uh, the environment friendly products that is how we can actually justify our our, our moderators in in our manuscript and i tell you uh, i will i will i will i can show show it to you that uh, in one of uh, of the research papers the reviewers they have started commenting that why why you have checked the moderation effect on one or two or two relationships why not on all the relationships that you have actually uh, proposed in your model so use of mediation and moderation is quite important from the perspective of like we when we when we are trying to draw some meaningful insights from the model why there is a relationship between dependent and independent or independent and dependent exist this this could be explained by mediating variable similarly moderation it moderates the relationship between uh, the independent and dependent it explains a lot of thing okay so that's how we we stop here any questions participants if you have any question you can ask dr adil
Dr. Adil, uh, the, the paper you were just uh, the showing off, actually, yeah. uh, it was having three independent variables, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Just for the sake of participants' understanding, I have used only one, one, uh, one, one uh, independent variable. Yeah. That means, uh, actually, uh, you have checked this uh, moderation effect on all the three uh, uh, independent to be variables. Honest, to be honest, we started with the only one by uh, one relationship actually but then uh, the 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 reverse comments were like this that service quality can be a moderate in, oh sorry not not in this case in, in another paper we we received the comments from the reverse which says that 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 your moderator can be uh, tested on, on all the relationships that you have actually proposed in your model so these days, actually, why I'm emphasizing upon uh, moderation and mediation is, is the fact that these days, those papers are highly, I mean, uh, accepted. Chances of acceptance is quite high if, if we have used either moderation or mediation or even both. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Anyone else who is having any kind of question? I'm sorry for the technical glitch in the initial no, phase no, of our we can understand. lecture. The problem is we were trying to call you and then uh, at times uh, it, it happens. Yeah. So uh, no issue. So who was she? Uh, Karuna, are you there? Yes, sir. Dr. Karuna. Yeah, but please conclude the session. Thank you, sir. In spite of some technical glitch uh, in beginning, all participants remain present online. Yeah. So, thank you very much, sir, uh, for this very informative and interesting session. Uh, I really thank you in uh, like uh, with very simple example you quoted uh, throughout the session, which makes this technical session and these technical terms uh, easy to understand for all the participants. I hope so. I'm sure. I'm, I'm uh, sure that it will be very useful for all of us, and we will use this in various interdisciplinary research work. Yeah. Uh, now, I request organizers to send a feedback link in chat box. I also request to all uh, fill this session feedback link, which will remain only open only for the next ten minutes. Uh, may okay, I, uh, I announce the third session of a day? Two of this Atal FDP organized by Department of Management SBMS is concluded uh, successfully. Thank you so much to all participants and thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Karuna. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adil. Thank you, Dr. Asad. Dr. Jamshed. Thank you so much. Uh, we need a few volunteers for We need to uh, 